second graders, the book that I'm going to read today is called The Koala Who Could. It is written by Rachel Bright and Jim Field. So this is a fun story. It's got a nice rhythm, a little bit of rhyme. Um, there are so many things that we could do with this book. We could pause the book to look for those initial and final blends in words. Um, we could do so many things, but what I want you to be thinking about today are all of the story elements that we talked about. We read this When we read the story The Invisible Boy, we talked about the characters and the setting and the problem and solution. Today with the koala who could, I would like you to also think about the characters in the story, the setting, where are they, and the problem and solution. And then we'll have an opportunity to do an activity with all of those things in a little while. So the koala who could. The koala who could. And I'm just gonna slide it into place a little better for you. There we go. In a wonderful place where the day was just dawning and the breezes blew soft on a warm golden morning, in a place where the creatures ran wild and played free, a koala called Kevin clung to a tree. I don't know if you can see Kevin up here or not, but he is dark and in the shadows. A nicer gray fellow you never would meet, as soft as a soft thing from ear tufts to feet. His favorite way to relax in the sun was to cling and to nap and to munch a leaf bun. And after all this, well, he'd need a nice rest. Yes, Kevin liked sticking to what he knew best. You see, high up was safe since he liked a slow pace, while the ground down below seemed a frightening place. Too fast and too loud and too big and too strange. Nope, Kevin preferred not to move or to change. So he clung to his tree as he knew what to do and was never too keen to try anything new. So when Wombat stopped by and shouted one day, Hey, Kevin, why don't you come down here to play? Um, I think, he replied, I should stay on my plant. I'm busy right now. No, I'm sorry, I can't. Why not, cried the ruse with a super loud cheer. Yes, why, called the dingoes. There's nothing to fear. But Kevin, who'd never been one to act fast, said, I've clinging to do, but it's nice that you asked. Seems like he might be making excuses. He's got clinging to do. Hmm. As Kevin sat watching them chatter and share, a part of him wished he could join in down there. But he knew he'd miss home. It was so dark and so late. The whole thing was risky. Adventure could wait. Whatever the invite, he'd always say no. Oh dear, it seemed Kevin just couldn't let go. He just was too concerned, too worried to, to let go of his tree and go down lower, wasn't he? So his life was the same, no matter the day. The weeks came and went and the months rolled away. And Kevin stayed still while the world moved around until he awoke to a worrying sound. I like it when this happens in books. Tap, tap, the sound went. Well, this was a blow. Tap, tappity, tap, 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 tap. Oh no. 
Do we have a problem? I think we have a new problem. We had a problem before with Kevin not wanting to come down, didn't we? Uncling, the crowd called, which had gathered below. Leap and we'll catch you. Just let yourself go. But Kevin was scared. Let go? No, I shan't. I won't, shouted Kevin. Oh dear, I just can't. Can't. Woomph. Down came the tree and with it was bringing crash and a wallop, a Kevin still clinging. He never did let go, did he? Oh good, it looks like he's okay. Kevin, he carefully opened one eye and looked up at the love staring down from the sky. Then one paw by one paw, he loosened his hold. He felt springy and light and happy and bold. The worst he could think of had now come to pass. And he was just fine. Why, he felt quite first class. So when Wombat leaned over and held out his paw, or excuse me, and held his paw out, Kevin no longer felt worry or doubt. When Dingo asked, now will you come out to play? The crowd all joined in with a, what do you say? And even though this wasn't part of his plan, Kevin replied, Yes, I think that I can. And Kevin, from then on, was always can do. Because life can be great when you try something new. And that's where we're going to stop the story. We will continue working with some story elements in just a little bit.